Congratulations and jubilation, gamers from all around the world. I am Lucian, the World Gamer. Welcome to a show where we talk about everything gaming. And today I have a very special guest here with me, Jeremy Blaston, legendary translator, voice director, and absolute authority in video games localization. Welcome, Jeremy, and thank you so much for being here with us today. Hi, Lucian. It's great to great to be here. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> so, guys, he's worked on some of the best and most classic video games ever. If you love games from the 90s and the 2000s, you probably experienced his work. His curriculum is super stellar with the, uh, games ranging from Metal Gear Solid to the Silent Hill series, but also Shenmue and classic RPGs like uh, Super N2, Valkyrie Profile, Bundle Hearts, uh, Shadow Hearts. Uh, so, I mean, guys, he's the one who came up with the name Codec for Metal Gear Solid 1. In the now iconic phrase, what is a man from Castlevania <laughs> Symphony of the Night. So just wow. I mean, it, the more I think about it, the more it just blows my mind. And that's not even mentioning uh, your role as a voice director and your work uh, on localizing and translating the anime adaptation of a little series you might, uh, you guys might have heard of called Pokemon. <laughs> oh, Jeremy, you had a hand in everything I love. You made my childhood, and I'm sure that wow. of uh, our viewers today, some shape or form. So it's an honor to have you here, Jeremy. Thanks again. Thank you. I appreciate that's a great introduction. Thank you. I feel <laughs> on top of the world after that introduction. Great. <laughs> so, and um, I gathered some notes to help me because we have a lot to talk about. Let's party! Hey, how you doing? Silent Hill. You've worked on Silent Hill 2, 3, 4, and Book of Memories, which is are the most fun favorite Silent Hill ever. <laughs> and uh, you are also, aside from localizer, voice director. And uh, you are also more directly involved with series. Uh, like Team Silent asked you what uh, you think would be appropriate for the American audience and whatnot. How did those meetings go and uh, how, how was it, uh, what was it like to be involved so closely in the series? So working with them was absolutely great. Um, as far as the meetings, um, it's my recollection that I, I went to Japan once or twice before the translation started. And yeah, we had the first meeting, I recall them just throwing ideas around. But what they were really trying to do was, um, use me as an American to gauge really how far they could go. They wanted to push the envelope and they were thinking about the Western audience. So they just used me as a sounding board, really. And, and they were concerned. That, that's a very humble approach, you know, to be able to ask for somebody who, who, who's uh, the target audience in a way, who's part of the target audience, you know, so that, 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 that says a lot about the team, I would say. I think so. Yeah, I think so. Nice. And uh, in which one of your own ideas uh, came to be in those games? Maybe something that is not widely known, but it, you know, it was your own idea that ended up in the games, if there is any of your input. I don't think there were many other than, uh, I tended to choose the names of the characters. But other than that... Uh... So James Sunderland is yours. The name James Sunderland. That's fantastic. It's classic. Sunderland happens to be a town in Massachusetts. Um, but uh, the derivation, the derivation of the name is to thunder, is to separate, right? Right, makes sense. Yeah. Was a character from Silent Hill too, Eddie? Eddie. Eddie. Yeah. yeah, there was a there was a uh, a person in my daughter's class who uh, had been mean to her, so that was kind of my revenge. Oh, nice. <laughs> Very dangerous to mess with you. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. Uh, I didn't know that, by the way. That, that's awesome. I never, I never played to that. Great, and and so did you have any input in the lyrics uh, of the songs by Akira Yamaoka that appear in those games? Uh, I remember he asked me to write lyrics to the feel of Laura, huh? And you know, not translate them, but to write them and try to come up with things. But he, <laughs> I think he didn't, he didn't. It wasn't his cup of tea, so he went in a different direction. Okay. <laughs> But he was open at the idea, you know, uh, 
of asking somebody else. So, so you, in the end, you didn't write a single word for the lyrics at the end, but it, again, it says a lot about the people working there. They were really open, it seems, right? Yeah, yeah, very much. Good to know. And you were also voice director in those games uh, as well. And uh, everyone who played these games knows that the dialogues have a very unsettling pace and this hugely contributed to the to the otherworldly atmosphere was it your idea from the beginning was it even intended maybe as a direct continuation of the style of the first game well it wasn't intended the only the only way in which i might say it was intended is that the voice actor of uh, uh james had a kind of a limited ability to switch it up let's just say that he pretty much could only deliver the lines the way he could deliver them and no margin of maneuverability basically yeah no margin of maneuverability and uh he didn't have a very natural way of talking in general and so i think what people are hearing is you know guy see he trying his best to deliver the lines the way i wanted them but filtered through his own um acting abilities so it was not intended and that the other thing i think was that the interval between you know when i speak in a, in a, in a conversation if i say hey how you doing lucian you know you you're going to respond in a certain kind of tempo after a certain interval but i always believed that it was the the way in which the dialogue kind of loaded up that or rather After we did the recording, the team had to put it together. And not being natural English speakers, there might be some uh, something to do with the way that they edited it, or something to do with the way the 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 timing that it it it, it threw off the tempo a little bit, um, so that it sounded a bit unnatural in some cases. I remember that as my first impression hearing it, like, oh man, I wish they had involved me in the post production so I could have like made it flow a little bit better but you know this is one of those happy accidents in which uh, the un the, uh, the unnatural element of what you said of the editing of the vocal performance literally took it to the next level you know uh, they were real professional actors so to speak they had various levels of experience but nobody was like hollywood pro and how did they manage to get involved uh, in, in the recordings then the team wanted to um They wanted to attend the recording sessions, so they asked that we do it in, in Japan. But especially at that time, there was really a very, very shallow pool of um, actors and voice actors. These were, they were primarily people that were doing either commercials or occasionally, you know, doing English language um, learning tapes or, you know, things like that. So we were just working with a very limited number of people. and. Um, that's why it doesn't have this, like, if you hear like a, a, an actor like Troy Baker, he's so professional that it doesn't even sound like a real person anymore. You know, right. it sounds like an actor. So I think Silent Hill 2, it feels more real, like they're more real people in some cases. You know, their voice is not perfect. But at the same time, you know, I, I, this makes me think it could have been so much more wrong because if you think about it uh, resident evil the first one is in the same situation there was a, a very small pool of uh, uh, english speaking actors from japan and that went uh, in a way that it was unintentionally hilarious this didn't happen in silent hill also silent hill one i was wondering one thing were there ever any recordings which did not end up in the games as far as you're aware Well, we certainly took a lot of extra things that they wound up not using. Anything meaningful? No, 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 no nothing, nothing like that. Um, just things like, uh, you know, a Mr. Yamoka might say, okay, I think I might want a lot of different voices talking in the background. So, you know, they, he would come in on the last day and say, you know, all right, um, guy, can you just pretend like you're talking to someone but mumble? And Yamoka would take him and do stuff with it. You know, we didn't leave anything on the floor. And that, but there is this joke ending in Silent Hill 2, the one with the dog, 
I don't want to do yeah. spoilers for the few people who are watching this video that didn't play the, the original, but uh, if you recall, I'm not sure if you even saw it, but that sequence uh, didn't uh, have English dub. So do you have any, it was only Japanese. So do you have any idea why was that this done this way? And uh, uh, was there ever going to be an English dub uh, for the sequences, but maybe didn't have time or maybe it was added later? If you're talking about Guy Thiefi's, um I remember he said something in, in Japanese in that ending. Uh, but I think I wasn't there that day. I think that was one of those cases where, you know, maybe Mr. Yamaoka or someone else, you know, okay, say this in Japanese. And it was just like something that he... Maybe last minute as well. Yeah, it was a last minute throwaway thing. We'll throw this into the game. Not very serious. So I wasn't, I don't even think I was there. Okay. How about the Silent Hill remake? Uh, Silent Hill 2 remake. Did you manage to take a look at the trailer? So, what do you think of it? Because, of course, it, they won't use your work. What do you think of it? Mm -hmm. You know, there was the HD remake, right? <laughs> we don't talk about that, <laughs> but we do, of course. I was pretty critical of it. <laughs> when I saw the trailer for the new one, my first impression was uh, quite quite surprised because at first I wasn't sure it was. If it was new, that new uh, recording or not, because <clears throat> the actors were clearly, really, really, very clearly in my mind, copying the read of the original. So in other words, you know, if I played, I said to you, uh, okay, Lucy, listen to this line, listen to how she says it, and give, me, give it back to me like that, but in your own voice or, you know, but try to keep the same beats, try to keep the same tempo, try to, you know, accentuate the same things. That's what I heard in the Silent Hill 2 remake. It sounded to me really clearly that they were referring to the original and wanting to get the same type, the same line reads. So you can tell that Bluebird team is like uh, extremely cautious with the, they know what they know what they are messing with. Uh, yeah. So they tried their best and there were their fair share of controversies, but uh, especially I believe, I honestly, my opinion is that the first trailers lean too much towards the action when Silent Hill is anything but about the action, you know? So I think it, it was just uh, um, the the marketing team uh, just doing the wrong thing at the wrong time. Uh, but the, the best part at least is that apparently this misunderstanding was clear that the, the game is knows what it's about, at least it seems. But for sure, one that... Uh, I, I'm with you about the criticism of the DHT remake that was uh, released on PS3 and Xbox 360. But Silent Hill 2 got, got lucky still, in a way, with the voice acting, because there was at least the selection between the old voice acting and the new one. The less said about the new one, the better. But the third game caused an uproar by the fans, so the fans were really like, uh, uh, why, why did you remove the, the original? Uh, voice uh, voiceover and uh, how does it make you feel the fact that fans care so much about your uh, the original work uh, to the point of actually bashing the game for it fans point at your work as the definitive version of the game I mean I'm not going to stand here and say that that they were the end all be all of great um, voice acting but they were the original thing and it was lightning in a bottle, and um, I can understand why people would want to hear what they played in their youth. So, uh, and of course, I, I'm happy about it. Because that's that's the case. Fans were like, "Give us the, the re don't, don't mess with things that work that are classic for for us, you know, or at least give the option." Silent Hill Three is iconic with the with his voice acting as well, as much as two, in my opinion. So, not to give the option. I, I totally, I, in fact, I, I thought the acting on Silent Hill 3 was, was better than 2 for sure. Yeah, yeah. And speaking of uh, Silent Hill 4, uh, there was this rumor that uh, Silent Hill 4 was not conceived as part of the Silent Hill series, at least in the beginning. And um, what's your input there? Yeah, I'm not entirely sure. I mean, I, I think I read that you know, team, you know, some of the people from Team Silent said, yeah, it was always going to be. Mm -hmm. uh, a Silent Hill game, but that they intended it to be very different. I mean, I remember what they did was they essentially did three and four at the same time. 
they split the team in half. He, he, and uh, he, Silent Hill 4 was pretty controversial at the beginning, but uh, I think it's being revisited and re-evaluated more recently. I've always loved it. It was, uh, I found it, uh, if you can believe it, scarier than than 3. If you can believe it, because the monsters really got under the skin, honestly. Well, but that is my 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 you know my take on that. But I would like to know your project uh, out of the three, your favorite project out of the three. Which one? Which one gave you the fondest memories? Um, got you there. <laughs> yeah, that's a tough one. I mean, it was either two or three for sure. Uh. He- why did something go wrong with four, or was it simply no? The, the, nothing went wrong with it, but um, part of the recording was done in New York, um, and some of the actors uh, were Pokemon actors, um, if I recall. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't. I didn't realize that. I, in general, are you a horror fan of movies or? Yeah, I'm a very big. Uh, all the same influences that Team Silent had, um, David Lynch and. Um, uh, what's his name? The uh, the master of body horror. Um, ah, the one from Alien. Or is it no, no, the no. Tom Savini, the special effect artist? No, 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 uh, no. I can't really. <laughs> but uh, did you play any of these games after they were completed? Uh, the Silent Hill games. Uh, did you manage to finish them? I think I finished. Uh, I think I don't think I finished four, but I, I definitely finished two and three. They're not exactly fun to play in the sick, you know, it's not like playing uh, Animal Crossing. Right. <laughs> it's, it's it's pretty dark. It is. It is tough in some, in some cases. So, if you think of the games like Silent Hill, they are made, these games, by Japanese people, but clearly the settings are mostly American driven. And you can see that this yeah. is how Japanese people see America. Right. Right? Exactly. So, especially at the time. Yeah. people didn't know English very well, but it seemed to be how much they love Hollywood movies so much that they, that they influenced their games in such a big, big way. So you would think that with settings like this, those games were basically Western ready, but they were really not. Clearly they were not. And that's where, where when you mm. came into place in polishing everything yeah. for the yeah. Western audience. How did you deal with that? <laughs> did it make you laugh? Did you cringe? It? Yeah. I- I did, I did all of those things. Um, I think it's a very interesting thing that you're bringing up and it's kind of, it's a little bit hard to understand as a translator, what is my job? Not only what is my job, um, sort of the words, is my job to make it purely Western, removing the Japanese things? How do you even retain the Japanese things? Um, if so. Yeah, so there's that fundamental question, right? How how do you even keep it? You know, you, you can't basically. Well. Yeah, a lot of um, a lot of interesting, uh, you know, sort of philosophical problems come up with that. Yeah, and the, and the translation is always at a loss. Uh, it, we yeah. try to lose as li- as little as possible. That's yeah. I guess what we well, what we go for yeah. at the end of the day. Yeah. Look, thank you so much. I think it's time to wrap it up. But before we do, one last question. Where, Well, it's not really a question. More of a space for you to say anything you wish to our viewers. Your fans who followed your work over the years. So what would you say? Well, first of all, I'd say thank you. I can't believe I have fans. <laughs> um, you know, I would say that um, I really loved you know, translating all these games and nothing makes me happier than the thought that um, I inspired people or I made their days a little bit better. Um, It's awesome. It's absolutely awesome. And I feel really privileged to have had this career and this opportunity. And um, that's about it. Thank you everybody for all your support. And um, that's about it. Awesome. Well, guys, I'd say we can now let Jeremy go. We've kept him here for long enough. And uh, you've been very patient. Uh, you've answered so many questions today. And I truly, truly appreciate your honesty about the topics we've been discussing. 
thanks so so much for your time you really made my day and i'm sure that of our viewers as well it was my pleasure as well and that really wraps it up i hope you guys uh, enjoyed this nice little talk with our special guest jeremy blostin if you did don't forget to like and subscribe so that i can bring you the best quality content but really at the end of the day i just want to thank you so much for spending some of your precious time watching this video to the end I wouldn't be seeing you in my next one, but until then, stay safe, play safe world gamers.